of Section 2.8. It says, consider this function and observe that as you approach zero, this becomes zero to the zero. Well, zero to the zero, that's indeterminate. Now, we do know that uh, 0 to the 1 is 0, 0 squared is 0, 0 to the 3rd is 0, 0 to any power is 0, it seems like, even to the 1 half power, the square root, is 0, or the cube root, or whatever. And if you have 1 to the 0, or 2 to the 0, or half to the 0, any number to the 0, is one. So we got this question. We've got zero to some power is always zero, and a number to the zero power is always one. So what is zero to the zero? And that's kind of a question. So let's see if we can figure this out. So they suggest creating a function ln of this. So h of x will be the natural log of g of x, which is x to the 2x. And by the power rule, this becomes 2x ln x. Okay? Now, if we rewrite this, if we multiply the numerator by 1 over x, and the denominator by 1 over x. This x would cancel that x, and we're going to get what they have here. Okay? And if you look at this as we get close to 0, 1 over 0 goes to infinity. And if you go to 0, ln is a function that looks like this. So it goes to negative infinity, so they're both going to infinities, so we can apply La Hapital's rule, which says we can take the limit uh, as a x approaches zero from the positive side of the derivative of 2 ln x, which is 2 times 1 over x, over the derivative of 1 over x, 1 over x is x to the negative 1, so its derivative is negative x to the negative 2, or negative 1 over x squared. Now, if we multiply numerator and denominator by a negative x squared, negative x squared, that cancels out the x squared and the negative, and we get limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side, uh, uh, negative 2 from the negative and the 2, and x squared over x is just x. And this, as x goes to 0, will go to 0. That's what that'll be. So uh, h is going to 0. So what does g go to? Well, if ln of something is uh, 0, ln of what is 0? Well, that has to be 1. So what was inside, the g of x, g of x has to be 1. And so that's a justification for saying that 0 to the 0 is 1. Now I want to show you one other justification for that by pulling out the calculator and turning it on and I'm going to clear this and I'm going to go x to the x and then I'm going to go zoom 4 and look at the graph of this and do you see that as we get close to 0 on the positive side it approaches a height of 1. If you go to second table, 
and start putting numbers in close to zero from the positive side. You see how we're getting closer and closer to one? And so that's some justification for that's not defined. You can't do it, but it approaches the value of 1. Okay? So that's the idea of 7. Now let's look at 8. Now we're dealing with dominates. So f of x, as you, x goes to infinity, f of x goes to infinity, and so is g of x. And if f grows, a g grows faster than f, it'll make the denominator grow so much faster than the numerator that it will go to zero. And that, if that happens, we say g dominates f. So which dominates here? So it, we're looking at the ratio, and we're going to put whichever one we think dominates in the denominator. Now, the square root of x looks like sideways parabola, and ln x looks something like this. So it looks like the square root might be higher, more dominant than ln x, so let's check that out. So we'll check at the limit as x approaches infinity, just like they say, of what we think dominates, the square root of x in the denominator, and ln x in the numerator. Now, I want you to watch carefully what happens when we have ln x in the numerator. Since they both go to infinity, we're going to take the derivative. Derivative of ln x is 1 over x, which is going to eventually put an x in the denominator. Now, what happens when you take the derivative of something to a power, x to the 1 half? We always reduce the power by an x, by 1, which is an x. So its degree goes down a value of 1, a size of 1. But if we're putting an x into the denominator by multiplying numerator and denominator by x to get that out of there, we're going to bring it right back to what it was. Now watch how that happens. So if I take the derivative of this, I get 1 half x to the minus 1 half. And then if I multiply numerator and denominator by x, I get 1 over a half x to the mi minus 1 half times x to the 1. We add the powers and we get x to the half. And I'm back to the same power I had to start with. And you can see that this will go to infinity, this doesn't, and so it is true that this dominates this. It grows faster than that one. Okay? Which function dominates L and X or uh, N root of X? Well, the same reason that I just explained here, if L and X is going to produce 1 over X, what Put another x in the denominator. So even though I'll reduce the power of this by 1 when I take the derivative, the x is going to bring it back up, and there will be a constant of 1 in the numerator and something times x in the denominator, and it will still be this one dominating because it will still go to 0. Why does e to the x, why will it dominate any polynomial function? Well, if we're taking the limit of ax to some high power and then plus bx to a little bit less and plus c, blah, 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 clear down to a constant, and we got it over e to the x, and if we're taking the limit as x approaches infinity, well, this will go to infinity, and so will this, so we'll take the derivative, which reduces the power of this, the degree of this, by 1. e to the x stays as strong as it was before. So 
It will still both go to infinity. I'll take the derivative again. This will get one less degree, and that every time I take the derivative doing this process, they will keep going to infinity. The degree of this will keep dropping until I'm down to a constant divided by something goes to infinity, which means e to the x will dominate any polynomial. And who will dominate between x to the n and l and x? Same reason as before. When we do L and X, if we had L and X over X to the N, and we're taking the limit as X approaches infinity, L and X will pr produce another X in the denominator when we take its derivative. And this will get reduced by 1 when we take the derivative, but it will increase by 1 well, by the X we bring down, and we'll have 1 over X to the N, times n uh, as x approaches infinity l and x will put it in x in the denominator we would have had n x to the n minus 1 and there will be a 1 this x will increase that by 1 and so this will still go to infinity we'll have 1 over infinity which is 0 so L and X will always be dominated by X to the N. And then it says, give two nonlinear functions that neither dominates. Well, uh, X squared and 3X squared. Take derivative, take derivative, and they're both gone, and it'll be one third. Uh, you could also do E to the X and E to the uh, x plus 1. Neither one will dominate each other. Okay?